Hey everybody, it's Tiffany from Quilters Workshop and today we're going to be doing a doormat. So I cut out all of the pieces using my Silhouette Cameo 3 and I'm just using the Oracle 631 vinyl to make my stencils with, mostly because this is <laughs> all I have on hand at the moment. And I'm using a doormat that I actually bought two of last year, so I made this exact same one and I gave it away as a gift last year and I never really got around to making one for us. And at the moment, our doormat that we have outside is a really pretty one that I bought at Joann's uh, two springs ago. And it's just getting kind of worn and now that um, Christmas is coming and everything, it just doesn't really match my wreaths that I have out. So I thought this would be a good time to do it. So I just chose a, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it just says welcome because I'm original. And then I also cut out these little, um, they sort of look like little sprigs, if you can kind of see it. And I'm gonna put that on either side. And the doormat that I bought already has a black border. So we're just adding this to the center basically. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, in case you haven't done one before, after cutting out your design is you're going to weed it. So I'm just going to pull out all of the little areas that you want to fill in with paint. Okay, so I actually ended up taking out those smaller bits in here as well because I feel like on this type of material, this is a coir mat, I just don't think that the paint is going to show those small details. I feel like if you were using it in an iron-on vinyl project that it would look really great, but I just, for the purposes of this, I think the pieces need to be larger for it to show up better, if that makes sense. So I weeded them out entirely, so you're just left with this more solid leaf outline and then we did this like that <laughs> anyway so now I have some transfer tape it's actually used so I tried to use it a couple of times before I call it a day so I'm going to put the transfer tape down on the part that says welcome first and then you're going to really make sure this is pressed on. I also have one of these little, what is this? Like a scraper, like a squeegee. Just gonna make sure that's on there really well. Okay, and then I'm going to just find the center of my mat. And you're going to lift the backing part off of your vinyl very carefully. Okay, let's set that aside. And now you're going to place this down where you need it to be. And then I press this on with my hands and then you're going to get your squeegee again. Now this part is the most important because it's really important that your edges of your letters are stuck down to the mat as best they can be so that when you go to paint it that the paint doesn't kind of seep, if that makes sense. last part that we're going to do is just lift the transfer tape. Now I feel like I can't remember what I used last year for the vinyl but this isn't holding down to the coir as well as whatever material I used last year but I feel like it was the same. If it wasn't the 631 it might have been the 651 but I think this will be okay. I think we're going to make it work. So I'm using a folk art black paint. Um, 
it's acrylic, but it's also good for outdoor use. So people use this to make like signs outside, birdhouses, that kind of thing. And we're going to just peel up the transfer tape. Okay, so I thought I would just spin it around this way so I could show you that I finished painting over all of the stencil part. Um, the center of my E popped up while I was painting, so that's why you can see the mat through there, but I think it's going to be really good. So I'm just going to give this a couple seconds, I guess, to dry and then see if I need to do any little touch-ups. Okay, so Amy... Excuse me, off that. Um, hey. Okay, so this is the completed mat. I realized after, oh my god, she thinks always she needs to be in pictures. Okay, Amy. Um, so this is the completed look. This is just gonna keep happening, sorry. So I would recommend, because I realized now that I'm editing the video because I made the mat about a week ago. I forgot to show you the ending of it. So after I peeled the vinyl off, I let it dry overnight and I would recommend top coating it with something. Now I used a Verathame, just like a clear top coat, something that I had used that was waterproof. I used it as a top coat when I stained the top of my kitchen table. So you could use something like that. I've also heard people use the Krylon clear spray or I've actually also heard some people using hairspray. So I guess it just depends on what you have on hand. I'm all about using whatever you have. Um, doormats, you know, they don't really last forever. Even the store-bought one that I have, I've had it for about two seasons now and it's pretty much done. So I feel like these mats, when you buy them blank, they're pretty inexpensive. So I feel like if you get like a season or two out of them, they've done their job. So Basically what I'm saying is I don't think it really matters what you use as a top coat because it's going to fade, especially if it's in a place where there's a lot of heavy foot traffic. And here in Canada, you know, we've got wet boots, salt on our boots, all that kind of stuff, dogs walking across it. Um, but yeah, so if you have any questions about anything else, my um, email address is quilters.workshop at gmail.com. It's also listed in the description box below as are all of my social media handles. So I post more, much more frequently over on my Instagram um, to my stories more than anything else. So if you are curious about what I get up to on there, um, you can follow me over on Instagram. I would love to have you. And um, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a great day.